and welcome to Johnson Coliseum. Jason Barfield here alongside Ken Holland for game number two of our doubleheader as the Sam Houston State men get set to take on the Colonels of Nichols. Nichols comes into this ball game eight and six overall, two and one in league play. All the Bearcats are 10 and four and three and zero oh in the Southland. We'll run down the starting lineups first for Nichols. Starting at guard, a six-foot junior out of Thibodeau, Kevin Johnson. He's joined by Jeremiah Buford, a six-foot-five junior out of Atlanta. Dexter McClanahan, six-foot-four senior out of Cape Corporal, Florida. At forward, Elvis Harvey Jr., a six-foot-eight senior out of South Bay, Florida. And then starting at forward, a six-foot-seven sophomore, Warith Alatashi. Out of Houston, Texas, he played at Westside High School. For the Bearcats, R.J. Smith gets the start as it's going to be a kind of a new look lineup with several players out today with various illness and injuries. R.J. Smith gets the start at forward, six foot five, two hundred and twenty pound junior. He's joined by Demarcus Lampley, Lampley, six foot two, one hundred seventy pound junior out of Phoenix City, Alabama, played at Wallace State. Terriante Thomas gets the start at guard. Thomas, a junior transfer out of East Mississippi Community College. Xavier Bryant gets the start at guard. Six foot, 180 pound sophomore out of DeSoto. And joining them is Kai Mitchell, six foot seven, 245 pound senior out of Haver Straw, New York. And Ken, this is gonna be a bit of a thin bench today for the Bearcats, no Zach Nuttall. No Chad Bowie and no Dane and Swoop. So we're going to have to mix and match a little bit and see if the Cats can piece something together here today. Yeah, definitely the Bearcats are going to be without some key components, especially on the energy side and creating turnovers and uh, the electric play on offense. So uh, we'll have to see how Jason Hooten uh, puts together um, his substitutions and, and relieving people throughout the game. But obviously, the next man up has to step up and and come in and uh, and uh, make a contribution. Yeah, Bearcats are coming off a 94-75 win over McNeese in that game. Talking about players who had a big impact. Zach Nuttall, 25 points in that game for the Cats. And so they're going to be without his. But one of the guys who did step up in that game and a guy who's getting the start here today, Demarcus Lampley. Lampley with 21 points against the Cowboys, really kind of starting to come into his own a little bit here. Yeah, most of that uh, production in that game was in the second half. And so um, Demarcus Lampley does add a dimension to this team that, that is going to be exciting to watch. Getting him uh, in the game a lot today is going to be a key part of, uh, of, I think, a win tonight. So. You know, talking about players coming off the bench and providing a spark, Mark Ticanico. Yeah, yeah. You know, I looked at the line last, when we were calling the game uh, on Thursday night and hit three three-pointers within about a five-minute period of time. And, you know, I thought I was – I thought I looked at the wrong line or something. And, you know, so – but he, ha he has that threat. But Coach Hooten also wants him to be busy in the paint, getting uh, offense and defensive rebounds and, and defending well. And, of course, Coach Hooten is always wanting people to defend well. So – yeah, the long ball worked for the Bearcats in that one. 15 of 28 from three-point range against McNeese. So we're about set and ready to get it underway. Kai Mitchell will jump it up for the Bearcats. It is controlled by the Colonels. Fifteen left to shoot for Nichols. Johnson with it. Passes off to McClanahan. And the ball stripped away and stolen. Bryant comes up with it. Out for Lampley. Lampley fires up a three back iron. No good. So quickly we see Lampley getting an opportunity to shoot from long range. McNeese, or Nichols on the other end rather. Three-pointer is good. McClanahan knocks it down. First bucket of the game goes to the Colonels. McClanahan is their leading three-point shooter, so getting that first one for him may be the Nichols 
strategy here tonight. Lampley knocked to the floor. R.J. Smith comes up with the ball. Ten left to shoot for the Bearcats. Bryant with it. Just five on the shot clock. Bryant to Smith. Fires up a three. In and out. No good. Ball loose. And Cats come up with the offensive rebound. Bryant will fire up a three. Good! When he first got the ball, he thought about it. Then the defense kind of softened up on him and went ahead and took that three-pointer. Gave him a chance to shoot. He took it. So each team with a three-pointer to start. Jumper up. No good. Rebound. And the layup doesn't go either. How about a third look at it? No good. Ball being batted around. Still with the Colonels. A fourth look and then a foul called. And Alatiche will go to the line for the Colonels. Foul called on R.J. Smith. Alatiche going to the line quite often so far this season. 39 time with 29 makes it. 74%. First free throw, back iron, no good. Second free throw on the way, that one goes. So one of two for Alatiche. Inbound comes to Lampley. Lampley tried to fire it off to R.J. Smith. Smith wasn't looking for it. And it's a turnover by the Bearcats. So really a careless giveaway there. Back over to the Colonels. And a skip pass and they give it right back. RJ Smith will inbound. Bryant hands it off for Lampley to Smith. Ty Mitchell steps back, fires a three, in and out, no good. Cats have already fired up three three balls in this one so far. Check that, that was their fourth three-pointer attempt already. They haven't taken a shot from inside the arc yet. There's a three from the Colonels and it's good. Kevin Johnson knocks it down. There's been three shots made in this game by both teams. They've all been three-pointers. 7-3, Colonels lead. Mitchell catches in the low post, backs in, gives to Bryant. Bryant, head fake, back to Mitchell. A little bit of a bump. Mitchell, turn around, shot, left it short. Colonels come up with the loose ball. McClanahan with it over on the right side. Over to Johnson. Johnson fires up a three, and that's good. Ten three early lead by the Colonels. Cats have gone more than two minutes without a point. Smith and an offensive foul called the illegal screen from Kai Mitchell. Just called the extra lean there for Mitchell. And right now this little patchwork starting lineup having some troubles for the Bearcats getting in sync. Johnson with it for the Colonels. Pass to the corner, three ball fired up. Top of the backboard, no good. Stays with the Colonels, however. And the layup is good. Alatishi follows it up with the offensive rebound and the putback, and that's a 9-0 run by the Colonels. They lead it 12-3. Bryant spins in the paint, kicks it out. Three ball from Thomas, no good. Tip R.J. Smith, no good, but a foul called. And Smith will go to the line to shoot two. 
As we've got a timeout on the floor. We will take it. 15-34 to play here in the first. Colonels out to a 12-3 lead. to Sam Houston State basketball here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum, 12-3 lead for the Colonels as R.J. Smith will be at the line. Looking to snap a three-minute stretch without a point for the Bearcats. As the Colonels are on a 9-0 run. First free throw up and no good. R.J. Smith, a 72% free throw shooter so far this season, missing the first one. Second one goes. One of two on the trip for R.J. Smith. Ball knocked away by Bryant. Bryant streaking the other way. Fought off a little contact, no whistle, and the shot was no good. And Hooten's definitely going to ask why there was no foul called there. Colonels working it around the perimeter. Hunter with it up top. Hunter drives, lays it up and in. D'Angelo Hunter, the West Virginia transfer, gets his first bucket. Bryant drives. Bryant lays it up and in. Great job by the Bearcats to spread the, the floor out and Bryant was able to go in for an easy layup. 14-6, Colonels in the lead. Three ball fired up, that's an air ball and it'll be Bearcat basketball. It's Hunter took kind of a wild three there. Juan Jones checks into the game for the Cats. Jones, a sophomore out of Colleen, played at Ellison High School. Colonel showing pressure in the backcourt. Jones breaks it, streaking down the floor. When nearly a miscommunication between he and R.J. Smith. Smith did a good job saving the turnover. As Mitchell looks to drive, and he was fouled on his way to the bucket. Foul is called on D'Angelo Hunter. His first team second. So the Cats will inbound along the baseline. Trailing by eight, whips a pass in. Thomas catches and lays it in. Good look there from Kai Mitchell. 14-8 Bearcats lead. McGee on the drive, lays it up in and over the top of Thomas. Nichols lead back to eight. 
Jones gives to Mitchell. Mitchell spins up and under. Fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Boy, just a quick step there by Mitchell. And when he's got that going, he is very tough to defend. Yeah, Kai Mitchell, the way he can move his body around, he's very deceptive, and he can make uh, people miss. And First free throw from Mitchell is good. And also a great free throw shooter shooting 84%, 32 for 38 so far for the year. So if you're going to foul him, it's going to be some trouble at the line as well for the opponent. So Terry Ante Thomas check out of the ball game. Jason Hooten, a couple quick words for him. Second free throw for Mitchell is good. Six point lead, nearly a backcourt violation, did a good job to save it. And a travel will be called and a turnover to the Bearcats. Xavier Bryant got his hand in on the ball and I think it caused him to have a stutter step to create that travel. Colonels once again showing pressure in the backcourt. Back off of it this time as Smith brings the ball up the floor, but then he's double teamed there, loses the ball, and out on the break. The layup is good. Andre Jones with the easy two. Turnover by the Bearcats there, costly. Bryant dribbling through traffic, gives it up. Lampley fires a three, no good. Mitchell got a hand on the ball, but it falls to the Colonels. Quickly attacking on the other end. Skip pass, moving the ball around the perimeter quickly. Down in the corner, three ball up, but a foul called. Get another look at the call here. Foul called on Bryant for a block. conversation with Jason Hooten continuing over in front of his bench on the replay that we just saw it looked like he was stationary and he the Colonel's player turned his body around and leaned into him I don't know how that became a block so 18 10 Nichols leads six left to shoot three ball up and that is good from Hunter 21-10, Colonels on top. Out to their biggest lead of the game so far. Bryant takes it, kicks, Smith fires a three, no good. Cats got the look that they wanted there from R.J. Smith, wide open. He couldn't knock it down. Colonels with a chance to build on the lead here. Three ball up, no good. Smith comes crashing in for the rebound. Off to Dewan Jones. Jones keeps it himself. Out for Lampley. Into Tikaniko. He'll fire up a long two, knocks it down. And that's where Tikaniko can be dangerous. He can get outside, have a nice little shot. Twenty one twelve Nichols lead. And a offensive foul called against the Colonels. Get another look at it here. A Lampley stepping in front and had position. I think that's the call Jason Hooten wanted on the, the previous blocking. So with that whistle, we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it. 10.37 left to play here in the first. Bearcats trailing Nichols 21 to 12 here on the Bearcats Sports Network.
back here at Johnson Coliseum. Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland. And right now the shooting struggles for the Bearcats here in the early going. 33% from the floor and just one of seven from three-point range, something that worked so well for them against McNeese. They had been able to get the three ball to fall. They trail this one by nine, have the ball here as Bryant brings it up the floor. Bryant to Tikaniko. Picked up his dribble, finds Bryant. Ten left to shoot. Cats look out of sync. Tikaniko, five seconds left to shoot. Now to Lampley. Jones, he's got to fire a long three, no good. That offensive sequence, the Cats just never looked like they knew where they were going with it. As there's a long three, no good. Jones with the rebound. Long three from Bryant, no good. Tikaniko, offensive rebound, he's knocked to the floor. And I don't think Jason Hooten really had that much of a problem with the three from Bryant there. He just told him, take a step up and shoot it from a little bit closer. Yeah, he's pretty far back. I think time running out there. One good positive to see there from Mark Tikaniko trying to getting that offensive rebound. Obviously, he was fouled, but that's what Coach Hooten wants to see out of Tikaniko getting up and getting those rebounds and especially for second chance opportunities for the Caps. So the inbound will come to Tikaniko. Ten left to shoot. Bryant with it. Drives baseline. Floater too strong. And it's dribbled out of bounds. No, they saved it. Colonels kept it alive over there. Kevin Johnson just keeping it in play. It's 21-12, Nichols leads, and now a foul called by, or called on Jones. First foul against Jones, four fouls against the Bearcats. So still not into a shooting situation. So the Colonels lean down along the baseline. Smith checks back into the ball game. Lampley out. Colonels haven't scored for 244. Bearcats, though, haven't really been able to take advantage of it. Still trailing this one by nine. Long inbound comes up top. A little floater on the drive, and that one is good. McClanahan with it. Snaps about a three-minute scoring drought by the Colonels. They're back up by 11. Smith shot. Good. He was fouled. It'll go to the line. Get another look at it here. Just a hit on the arm. Foul was called on Moore. Kai Mitchell checks back in for the Cats. Tikaniko out. That was the 16 foul on Nichols. So the free throw is good. Cats finish off the three point play. And for the final nine minutes of the half, the Bearcats are going to be shooting. See if they can maybe play it a little more aggressive. Yeah, and I think that bodes well for the Bearcats, especially against a Nichols team, but it's as good as the free throw line. And a turnover. I don't know if you can see it there on the camera. The entire Bearcat bench just erupted. The so heel was on the, on the sideline, and everybody over there called it. Bryant felt like there was contact in the backcourt. Couldn't believe a whistle didn't go just now. Into the corner, Thomas fires a three, good! And a timeout called by the Colonels. Cats have rattled off six straight points as Thomas buries a three from the corner. 
And the Cats have got it back down to a five-point game. We've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it. 8.26 left to play here in the first half. Colonels lead it 23-18 on the Bearcats Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum. Run down a couple of Southland Conference scores for you. You've got several finals already. Southeastern Louisiana knocked off AM Corpus Christi. That game in Corpus, 84 80. First Southland win of the year for Southeastern. Central Arkansas moves to 3 and 1 with a win over McNeese, 79 69. And Abilene Christian, they are undefeated in league play. They go to 3 and 0 with a 74 62 win against Lamar. R.J. Smith pulls down the rebound on the missed shot. Cats off and running with it. Down five, looking to get a little bit closer. Pass into the paint, knocked away, stolen by the Colonels. Long pass out front, and a whistle and a foul on the floor before the shot. Foul called on Smith, his second, team fifth. So no shots here. Yeah, McGee was standing at the line there. I think he thought it was going to be a shooting foul. So we get to see Cyrus Johnson, six foot five freshman out of Culver City, California. Cyrus getting some rare minutes on the floor after RJ Smith picked up his second foul. Jason Hooten having to do a little bit of mixing and matching with his lineup today. Three ball fired up, too strong, no good. Mitchell got a hand on it, and it's going to stay with the Colonels. Jason Hooten felt like maybe Nichols touched it last. Tough to tell from our angle. It looked like Mitchell might have been the last to touch. Inbound comes up top to Lyons. They'll kick down in the corner. Three from Johnson is good. Snaps a little run by the Bearcats. Lead back up to eight for the Colonels. Mitchell catches, spins on the baseline, now kicks up top. Nobody there. Lampley has to run it down. Gives it up to Bryant. Ten seconds left to shoot. Bryant, double team, finds Mitchell. Mitchell, turn around, layup, no good. Follow up by Johnson goes. A great board presence by Cyrus Johnson to come in there and tip that back in. A Long three, fired up by the Colonels, no good. Thomas pulls down the rebound for the Bearcats. Thomas pushing the tempo a little bit. Out to Bryant. Bryant nearly lost it. Regains control, now drives, lays it up off the glass, gets the roll to go. Back-to-back -back buckets by the Bearcats. They've got it down to a four-point game, 26-22. Kevin Johnson walking it up the floor for the Colonels. 
McGee with it, kicks to the corner. Hunter pulls up, 15-foot jumper, goes. Scoring pace starting to pick up a little bit here. We've got about six minutes left to play here in the first half. Mitchell steps back, fires a long three, doesn't get the roll to go. Caught the front iron. Three ball by Johnson, no good. Thomas with the rebound. 28-22 lead by the Colonels. Bearcats still shooting 38%. Lampley catches, 10-foot jumper, good! Fouled and he'll go to the line! You know, for the most part with Lampley, we just see him take that three. He shows a little versatility there on the drive and to hit the mid-range jumper. Yeah, that's great to see the versatility like you're saying, Jason. He's going to need to have both to, to be an impact player on this team in this league. Bearcats have hit five of seven from the floor. And Lampley at the line shooting a free throw, and he left it short. So 28-24 lead for the Colonels. Ten left to shoot for Nichols. Skip pass all the way to the opposite corner. Three left on the shot clock. A wild three is fired up, no good. Johnson pulls down the rebound. Good defensive series there for the Bearcats. Chance to cut into this lead a little bit more. Jones, bump, foul, will shoot. I think you're starting to see a little more energy from the Bearcats, certainly from the bench. Yeah. They have clawed their way back in this. It's good to see some of the guys that don't get to play as much getting an opportunity here in this early part of the conference season. Not just getting a chance, but certainly coming in and contributing right now. Absolutely. Jones' first free throw is good. He earns himself a second. 28-25. Nichols in front. One more free throw for Jones, and that one rattles in and out. So one of two, it's a three-point game. Hunter with it. Nichols swings it around the opposite end of the floor. Skip pass, high pass, had to go up and get it. Eight left on the shot clock. McClanahan fires up a three, no good. Rebound to the Colonels. McClanahan lays it off. Ball loose in the paint. Shot was up, rebound to the Bearcats. Another rebound by Cyrus Johnson. Colonels have now missed four straight from the floor and they haven't scored in two and a half minutes. Bearcats can cut it to one or tie it with a three. Lampley fires a three, doesn't catch anything. Quickly the other way, Hunter with a jumper, good. Snaps nearly a three-minute scoring drop by the Colonels. Gets the lead back up to five. Jones with it for the Bearcats. Off to Mitchell. Mitchell dribbled down in the corner. Now to Jones. Jones spots up for three. No good. McClanahan catches, kicks it down in the corner. Three ball up, no good. Nichols with the offensive rebound. They'll fire up another three. That's Hunter, no good. Jones with the rebound. Come on, come on. 
And a timeout called by Dewan Jones, and I think this is a break both teams look like they kind of needed. Bearcats haven't scored in two minutes. Nichols has missed six of their last seven shots. So we're going to have a timeout on the floor. We'll take it. 2.32 left to play. Nichols leads it 30-25 to 25 here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum, Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland. 2.32 left to play here in the first. Bearcats who have trailed this game by as much as 11. Down by five right now with the ball. Inbound comes to Mitchell. Kicks to the corner, Lampley, long two, up, good. Second bucket of the game for Lampley. Colonel lead back to three. Hunter fires a three from the corner. It's good. Cats left him open and he buried it. He's got 12 points. Second three pointer of the game for Hunter. It's a 33-27 lead. Mitchell to Jones. Ten left to shoot. Jones kicks to the corner. Thomas catches. Jones fires up a three. It's blocked, and it'll be a shot clock violation. Catch just never could get the look that they wanted. Jones finally had to take a desperation heave at it. Bryant checks back in. A minute and a half left to play here in the first half. Nichols leading 33-27. 10 left to shoot for the Colonels. On the drive, left-handed layup. Up and in by Jones. Lead back to eight for Nichols. Bryant quickly the other way. His layup gets the roll to go. High off the glass. Bryant asking for the foul, didn't get it. Finish the layup off. 35-29 as we're under a minute left to play. Ball knocked away, stolen by Bryant. Looking for help, nobody there. So Bryant will reset, skip pass to Thomas. Thomas kicks in the corner for Lampley. Lampley down low for Smith. Smith backs in, turnaround shot, in and out, no good. Colonels now can hold for the final shot of the half. You know, Jason, this is a, a different-looking Nichols team under second-year head coach Austin Clouch. They, they're moving the ball really well so far this uh, this game. Adjustments are going to have to be made during the halftime talk that Coach Hoot will have with the team. So that will do it for us here in the first half. Nichols got out to an early lead, led by as much as 11. And they will take a 35-29 lead into the break. So we're going to step aside for the half. We'll see you back here in 15 minutes on the Bearcat Sports Network.
back here at Johnson Coliseum. Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland as we're about ready to get the second half underway. Nichols leads it 35-29. It'll be Bearcat basketball to start. Terriante Thomas will inbound to Xavier Bryant. Cats trail by six. Nichols led by as much as 11 in that first half. First shot no good by Bryant. Well, Mitchell looked like he was in position for the rebound and couldn't come up with it. So nothing for the Cats on their opening possession of the second half. Kevin Johnson with it here for the Colonels. Johnson lobs the ball in. And the ball knocked away, stolen by the Bearcats. Lampley comes up with a loose ball. Out for Bryant, into the corner to Smith. Down low for Mitchell. Mitchell fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. Well, that's a shot typically you see Mitchell finish off, too. So Mitchell will be at the line. Shooting two here. First one is good. Kyle Mitchell does go to the line quite often for the Bearcats. He's shooting 84% for the season. Yeah, we got to look at it there. Just enough contact to throw the shot off. So he gets them both to go. So it's a four-point game, 35-31. Cats looking to see if they can string something together here. A couple of stops, a couple of buckets. There's a layup missed. Then the Cats come up with a rebound. Well, that's a break that they could use, see if they can capitalize. They give it right back. Colonel swinging around, fire up a three, and it's good by Harvey. His first bucket of the game. Quickly the other way, an offensive foul called on Kai Mitchell. Colonel lead is seven. They've got the ball, 38-31 lead. Early on here in the second half. Three ball up, shot no good. R.J. Smith pulls down the rebound. Thomas with it, fighting off some contact and gets the whistle. Foul called on McClanahan, that's three on him. So Katzel inbound along the baseline. Right back to Bryant, Bryant shot no good. Ball loose on the floor and jump ball is the call and it'll be Colonel basketball. Just a bit of a sluggish start to the second half. Hunter bringing the ball up the floor for the Colonels. Passes it around to Johnson. Johnson, skip pass, opposite corner, three ball up by Buford is good. Just like that, the Colonel lead is back up to 10, 41-31. Ball knocked out of bounds by Hunter. It'll stay with the Bearcats as Dewan Jones checks in. Let's get another look at the three-pointer by Buford. Buford just hitting 26% from three-point land. It took that one, but 
Colonels are just not afraid to shoot the three-pointer. Kai Mitchell fouled on his way to the basket. So Mitchell will go to the line. Shooting two here. First free throw by Mitchell is good. Jason Hooten there just looking to see if he can find a combination that works for him. Three regulars out today. Mark Ticanico checks in. Terriante Thomas out. Mentioned Tika Nico had a big game against McNeese two days ago. Five three pointers in that ball game. In a unique lineup here, having both Kai Mitchell and Tika Nico in the game at the same time. You see who the Cats decide to play inside, outside. 41 33 lead for the Colonels. On the drive, shot might have been partially blocked by Tikanico. Pass comes out to Lampley. Catch, lays it in. Great. Long pass in the layup there by Lampley. 41-35, Nichols leads. You know, Jason, that turnover came off of Mark Tikanico defending the basically the four position kick out three ball fired up and it's good Harvey again knocks down the three lead back up to nine for the Colonels they've hit some big three-pointers already here in the second half Jones hand check was fouled Colonels will make a substitution as Jones checks into the ball game. Inbound to Mitchell. Mitchell fakes the handoff to Jones. Backs it in, backs it in. And a whistle and a travel called on Kai Mitchell as he was backing into the paint. So with that whistle, we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it. 15.55 left to play. Colonels lead it 44-35 here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum, Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland. And boy, Ken, the second half, it just feels like Cats just can't string anything together to get back into this right now. Yeah, it, still, I think a, a lot of it has to do with the, the lineup, uh, the chemistry and, and getting just sinking in with playing together. So hopefully they can get it, get it going here soon. So, Colonel Ball, nine-point lead, 15-40 left to play. So, a lot of time left in this one. Hunter, turnaround shot, no good. Lampley with the rebound. Looks like R.J. Smith got a finger on that one. Deflected it. Oh, 
Shot up, no good. Jason Hooten wanted the foul call. Shot put up, no good. Nichols with the offensive rebound. Ball knocked loose on the floor. Jones comes up with it. Another chance for the Cats to cut into this. R.J. Smith cutting to the basket, knocked to the floor. And Smith will go to the line. Well, it depends on where they, they call this a shooting foul or on the floor. Foul was called on the Colonels. I believe it's on Harvey. Looks like he was making an effort to go up for the shot, so we'll put him on the line. You know, Jason, looking at the first half stats, two things uh, stand out to me. The Bearcats were out-rebounded 20 to 13, but then also the three points shots, uh, six of 17 for the Colonels and only two of 14 for the Bearcats, and they were down by six. That's really, you know, the, the game right there. Yeah, and the Bearcats, they're not gonna shoot two of 14 very often. The officials are going to go to the replay monitor here, and I'm not sure what they're going to look at. R.J. Smith just took a free throw. You know, going back to that, I think it's about the three-pointers. You know, last Thursday at McNeese, they hit 15. And then you go to a night like tonight, and right now they're hitting two of 14. So just a different, you know, Kind of the way it goes sometimes. So what do you think you're looking at? I'm not sure. See the official over there taking a look at the monitor. And I, you know, I mean, there's really not a whole lot there to look at. Um, the question I have, if they if they do decide something else happens with the free throw already Yeah, RJ's made. already taken one free throw here that he missed. Have they ever gone and if they make a different decision, do they? Well, I think one of the things that's different about this is only one official was over there. Usually you've got two looking at the monitor. Now the officials are getting together. I don't know if we'll get an explanation or not. Just, this is kind of how this second half has gone, these first five minutes. So they changed the foul on who they called the foul on. Initially, they indicated Elvis Harvey with the foul. They've changed it to Andre Jones. So Jones there with the foul called against him. And that's his second. So Smith's free throw is good, one of two. So it's an eight-point game, 44-36. On the cut to the basket, Hunter will pull up for the jumper, and it's good. So the lead is back to 10 for the Colonels, 46-36. Smith from the corner pulls up, 10 foot jumper, yes. Smith's got seven, the lead is eight for Nichols. Still 14 minutes left to go in this one. A lot of basketball still to play. Skip pass to the corner, now they'll come back up top. Turnaround jumper, no good. Smith with the rebound for the Bearcats. Out to Jawan Jones. 
Jones to Lampley. Kai Mitchell, step back. Tikaniko from the corner, head fake. Gives it off to Mitchell. Mitchell puts the shot up, no good. Loose on the floor, and timeout, I think, was called by the Colonels. Once again, though, another offensive possession that just looked out of sync for the Bearcats. So it's going to be a full timeout, so we will step aside here. 13.35 left to play. Bearcats trail by eight here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum, Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland. 13.35 left to play. Nichols has pretty much been in command of this game from the start. They got out to an early 12-3 lead. That's kind of about where we've been sitting, right about that 8-9 point advantage. Cats have been able to cut it down to as close as four. But Nichols has been in control of this one from early on. Leading by eight with the ball here. Kevin Johnson. He's swinging around for Hunter. Fires up a three. No good. Offensive rebound. The ball stays with the Colonels. Andre Jones with it here. Jones looks to drive. They'll fire up a three, and it's good. Harvey knocks another one down, and once again, Bearcats get it to eight, and it's a three by Nichols, and they get it back to double digits again. Ball knocked away, and it'll be Colonel basketball. I think Jason Hooten saying as they touched it last, it should be Bearcat ball. So it bounced off the chest of the official. We'll get a look at it here. It does look like Nichols pushed it out. It hit off the official's chest. So it'll be Bearcat basketball. Officials are still going to get together and chat about this one. Going to get everybody involved in the conversation. Seems like we've had a lot of stoppages here. And now they're going to go to the monitor and take a look at it. We'll get another look here. Certainly looks like it's last touched by Kevin Johnson. Would there be discussing uh, any the shot clock where it would be or? No, I can't imagine because the clock hadn't changed. It's still on eight. And I just don't know that they're going to have a look. Because they're sitting, to, they're talking about it. Nobody's actually looking at the monitor right now. 
So it's a discussion between the three officials out at midcourt. And it may just be administratively how do they handle this. Yeah, you don't see that very often, a ball hitting an official. Yeah, so the three of them are talking. Now we're going to go to the scorebook. So I don't know if it's a, a matter of possession. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get an explanation as to what they're looking at. Jason Hooten shaking his head. As frustrated as Coach Hooten is, obviously we're getting they're getting the ball back. Does it have to do with time or? And now they're going to the official stat computer. And are they questioning the score? Scoreboard says 49-38. They've talked to the book. They're now talking to the officials. Gonna put more They're putting 15 seconds on the shot clock. Well, they talked to a lot of people to put that have nothing to do with the clock to put seven seconds on the shot clock and give the ball back to the Bearcats. What a mess. Jones with it for the Cats. Dribbling through traffic, gives it to R.J. Smith. To Lampley. Lampley steps back, fires a three front iron, no good. Rebound comes down to the Colonels. After all of that, it's Nichols basketball. Johnson's pass underneath and a foul called on the Cats. Foul called on Lampley. First foul on Lampley. It's just the second foul against the Bearcats. So nowhere near shooting just yet. Step back jumper, no good. That was McClanahan. Cats come up with a rebound, Jones. Tikanico down low. Tikanico backing in, now to Lampley. Lampley, a little head fake, gives it back. Backs into the paint, turnaround shot, left it short, tipped by Smith, no good. Ball loose, Hunter comes in with it for the Colonels. Nichols leading by 11, 49-38, under 12 left to play. On the drive, now they'll kick to the corner, three ball up and no good. Tikaniko there with the rebound off the Hunter miss. Cats need a bucket. Jones drives and he was fouled. Foul called against Harvey. And with that whistle, we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it. 11-23 left to play. And the Colonels lead it by 11. This is Sam Houston State basketball here on the Bearcats Sports Network.
back here at Johnson Coliseum. Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland. 11-23 left to play here in the game. And the Colonels lead the Bearcats 49-38. It'll be Sam Houston basketball underneath their own goal. Inbound comes to Mark Tikanico. He lost a handle on it. Lampley nearly lost it. Bryant with the ball for the Bearcats. Spins into the paint, shot up. Little contact. Shot goes. So back to single digits, 49-40. Hunter with it for the Colonels. Drives, kicks, three ball fired up by McClanahan, no good. Bryant looks to take it all the way himself. Wild layup and a foul called, and Bryant will go to the line. Foul called against McClanahan. That's four on him. Yeah, I think this is where it's going to get interesting uh, down the rest of the way. Nichols is in getting in foul trouble. And there's certainly a pretty big foul discrepancy here in the half. Seven fouls against the Colonels, just two against the Bearcats. The Cats have a chance to take advantage at the line, but Bryant misses on the first free throw. McClanahan, who did not agree with the call, had an extended conversation with the official over here in front of us. One more free throw for Bryant. It is on the way and good. So the lead back down to eight. This is kind of where this feels like this game has been played, right around an eight-point lead. A kick to the corner. Hunter had a handle on it and lost it. Nearly threw it away all the way up top to midcourt. Still 14 left on the shot clock. Hunter was wide open over there in the corner. Long three, fired up, no good. Tikanico there with the rebound. That's a spot where Nichols in this half has been hitting those threes. Didn't get it there. R.J. Smith backs in, turnaround shot, yes! Bailout on the defense, didn't draw the whistle. Contact was soft. I think Brandon Moore was expecting the call, but he didn't get it. R.J. Smith, turnaround jumper. What tough shot there, Alatishi. Bryant the other way, got himself up in the air, and a foul called on Tikanico. And that's a smart foul, because that would have been easy too the other way. Yeah, that's Tikanico's first foul of the game, so. Officials conferred quickly just to see if they felt like there might be anything intentional there. They shook it off and said no. So 51-43 lead for the Colonels. Catch trying to go to 4-0 in conference play, but they're going to have their work cut out for them over these last nine minutes. Three ball up from the corner, no good. Stays with the Colonels. A little step back jumper, no good. Tip in on the backside, Alatishi. Gets it back to 10 for Nichols. Lampley, long two. No good. Rebound to the Colonels. That was a quick shot on that possession from Lampley. He was kind of off balance. Ten-point lead for Nichols, under nine minutes left. A couple of subs getting ready to come in for the Bearcats. Kai Mitchell waiting to check back in, and a foul called against Tikanico. Mitchell will check in, also Dewan Jones back in the ballgame. Jason, the first three wins in conference for the Bearcats, I believe, were by double digit. And so, obviously, this, this game is not working out that way. So, a, a, a tough test early on for the Bearcats in conference here. See if they can scrap something together over the last eight and a half. Still plenty of time. 
Hunter on the drive. A little scoop layup is in. Lead is 12 for the Colonels. Jones bringing the ball up the floor to Mitchell. Free throw line jumper, yes. And I think that's got to be a formula here for the Cats down these last eight minutes. You've got several big time players out. Mitchell is your guy. I think he's got to have a bulk of the touches on the offensive end of the floor from here down the stretch. Yeah, you're going to have to push it in inside to him and do an inside out game, but he is going to have to be a big part of that. So timeout on the floor, we'll take it. 8.09 left to play. Colonels lead by 10 here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum, Jason Barfield alongside Ken Holland. 8.09 left to play. Bearcats trailing Nichols, 55-45. Jones showing a little pressure in the backcourt for the Bearcats. Colonel swinging around. Look to drive baseline, kick into the corner, come up top. Around for Hunter, back in the opposite corner. Johnson with it, long three, no good. R.J. Smith with the rebound. Cats are getting the stops on the defensive end. Need to get a couple of buckets on the offensive side. See if they decide to go back through Mitchell again as there's a foul and Jones knocked to the floor. He'll go to the line to shoot a one and one. Feel like this is an area where the cats have a chance to cut into it at the free throw line. Chance to get it back to single digits. With Sam Houston in the bonus, you're exactly right. It got a lot of time left. Over seven and a half minutes in the bonus. First free throw, no good, however. So the score remains 55-45. A oh, floater, no good. Mitchell with the rebound. Mitchell gets it off for Jones. Jones now drops it in for Mitchell. Two on him. Dribbles into the paint. And a wild pass is a giveaway. Nichols has numbers coming back. Layup is up, no good. Mitchell there for the rebound. Quick outlet pass to Lampley. Lampley, free throw line jumper. Gets the roll to go. Lead back to eight for the Colonels. This is where the Cats have had their troubles stringing a couple together. They can get it down to eight, get it down to seven. But a three ball on the other end, and that's what Nichols has done this entire second half as Hunter knocks down the three. Every time the Cats seem to get it down to single digits, they hit a big three-pointer. Yeah, that's five three-pointers just this half for the Colonels. And it feels like all five of them have come in big moments like that when the Cats have cut it to six, cut it to eight, and they get a chance to get it back up to double digits. 
Bearcats just can't seem to get the momentum back in their favor. Get a key bucket here or there, but they can't string it together and get it in closer than eight points. So Nichols came in today two and one in Southland play. Bearcats three and oh, so a battle of two of the top teams in the standings. Abilene Christian has already won today. They've gone to three and oh in league play. The Bearcats will inbound, 6.19 left to play. Jones hands it off for R.J. Smith. Smith to Thomas, back to Jones. To the baseline of Thomas, baseline jumper, no good. Rebound to the Colonels. Fifty-eight, forty-seven lead, under six left to play. Cats bring the double team out. Colonels get it down to the baseline, now swing it back out. On the drive, lost. Picked up by Thomas. Thomas to Smith in the corner. Back to Thomas. Jones thought about it. Now he drives. Picks up his dribble. To Mitchell. Mitchell called for the offensive foul. Saw the arm come out with Kyle Mitchell. We also just heard Jason Hooten call a flop. So maybe a combination of both. Certainly anytime you get the arm up like that, though, yeah. any sort of slight extension of the arm is going to draw the offensive foul. So Nichols' lead is 11. Kick to the corner, three ball up, and good. Andre Jones knocks it down. It's now a 14-point lead. Jones bumped on the drive, and he'll go to the line. We'll shoot a one and one here. Four twenty-nine left to play. Bearcats trail it by 14. Playing shorthanded today, three regulars out. And it's really shown all day long. First free throw is good. Jones earns himself a second. Does put an extra stress on the lineup. You only have four bench players that could be uh, subbed in at any given time. Second free throw good. Yeah, they played eight here today. It's the only guy suited who hasn't played is Bubba Furlong. And a foul called on Jones. Two fouls on Jones, six on the Bearcats. So after this inbounds, the Colonels will be shooting the rest of the way. Long pass, well that nearly came to us, Ken. It did, are you ready? I was. I wasn't. Ball knocked away by Smith. He goes crashing into the seats. Tried to save it. It stays with the Colonels, though. So 
officials getting together and talking about it. That was coming our way too, Jason. The Colonels land down along the sideline. And that should have been a backboard. How does that get missed? I have no idea. That was just so blatant. And then a heave as a three and a shot clock violation. Yeah, let's take a look at that inbound. He stepped right there. Yeah, he caught it on that side of the line and carried it across. So with 3.57 left to play, we've got our final timeout. Bearcats trail it by 12 here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Back here at Johnson Coliseum, a lot of work to do for the Bearcats. Trailing by 12 with 357 left. It's Bearcat basketball. They need buckets and they need stops and they need them quick. Kai Mitchell hands it off to Jones. Try to get it back into Mitchell, it was covered. Lampley catches, steps back, fires a long two, no good. Rebound to the Colonels. Lob pass down low. Come back out for a three to Jones, and it's no good. We almost expected him to hit that. The way those threes have been falling for the Colonels here in the second half. So Jones will bring it up for the Bearcats. Drives, kicks, Lampley fires a three. Good. And a timeout taken by Jason Hooten. Cats get it back down to single digits, 61-52, a 30-second timeout. The Cats can see if they can put together a late little rally here as we take a look at what's to come for the Bearcats. They'll be back in action here on Wednesday against southeastern Louisiana. And then the Cats head out on the road, a tough three-game road trip at Central Arkansas, at Lamar, at Houston Baptist before wrapping up the month with two home games against Abilene Christian and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Jason, next Wednesday's game against Southeastern, they're always a tough team to play. Thankfully, it's here. Uh, you know, our conference is a tough conference. Yes. It's, night in and night out, it's going to be a battle. We're seeing that here tonight from this nickel squad. You have no gimmies in the league. Don't ever really have a chance to take a night off, so to speak. Ball stays with the Colonels there. Cat showing pressure in the backcourt. Nichols is having a hard time breaking it. Now they get the high pass out across. A 
Bearcats looking for a couple stops and a whistle away from the ball with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Foul was called on Dewan Jones. That's his third. Team seventh, so it's a one and one here. First free throw, no good. The Cats get the offense or get the rebound. Down nine, chance to cut into it a little more. Two and a half left to play. Jones, drive, shot, left it short. Rebound comes down to the Colonels. <laughs> Colonels content to use some clock here. Just try to shorten this game down. Now under two minutes left. Three ball from the corner is good. Harvey knocks it down. He's now got 12. There's a foul called, and Thomas will go to the line. That's the 13th three-pointer from the Colonels tonight. Every one of Harvey's buckets have been three-pointers. He's four of five from three. So Thomas will be at the line. Thomas will be shooting two here. First free throw is no good. Bearcats at the stripe tonight now, 13 of 20. 65% from the free throw line. Second one, no good. Offensive rebound, RJ Smith. Lampley turns around, fires a three, no good. Rebound to the Colonels. Shooting woes from long range continue for the Bearcats. Just three of 18 here tonight. Chance for the Colonels to bleed some more clock. Pass intercepted there by Lampley. Lampley, free throw line jumper, yes. And a timeout taken by Jason Hooten. Gets it back to 10, a minute nine left. I believe Cyrus Johnson checked back into the ball game. 30 second timeout, we'll leave it right here. Well, it looks like they're gonna go to the benches for full timeout. They didn't have a 30 left, so we'll step aside with them. 107 left, Bearcats trail it by 10 here on the Bearcats Sports Network. One oh seven left, Bearcats trail by ten. On the floor right now for the Bearcats, Johnson, Smith, Jones, Lampley, and Mitchell. Lampley leads the scores on the floor with thirteen. In fact, he's the Bearcats leading scorer today. And a foul called back behind the ball. R.J. Smith called for the foul. That was team foul number eight on the Bearcats, so one and one here. 
Harvey will be at the line shooting it. Jason, this is one of those games going into it that Coach Hooten, down three players, obviously knew it was going to be a battle. Um, obviously, this doesn't mean any dire straits for the season at all. Um, but obviously, getting his guys back come next Wednesday, it'll be, be a lot different than what's happened here tonight. Both free throws go, 66-54. R.J. Smith fires a three, no good. Jones with the rebound, out to Lampley. Lampley to Smith. Smith gives it up, Mitchell will throw down the dunk. And a whistle after the dunk. And I don't know if this is a clock issue. But boy, these guys have talked a lot tonight. I think they're a little sluggish from the holidays, too. Oh, they added 0.6 seconds. Helpful. 66-56. And a timeout called by the Colonels to avoid the five-second count. As Hunter called the timeout. Once again, reminder, we'll be back on the air on Wednesdays. The Bearcats host southeastern Louisiana. Then the men go on the road at Central Arkansas on January 11th, January 15th at Lamar, and then January 18th at Houston Baptist. For coming back home, they've got home games on the 22nd against Abilene and the 29th against A&M Corpus Christi. Crazy thing with the schedule this year, this is the last Saturday home game for either of the Bearcat clubs until, until February 1st. So three straight Saturdays away from Johnson Coliseum. Of course, on February 1st, SFA comes to town. And a whistle on the inbound. And that should be a good matchup between SFA and Sam Houston, obviously, it's our rival. SFA, after having a little bit of a down year last year, didn't make the tournament. They're back 3-0 so far this season. Jones called for the foul there. He's having a conversation, saying he fell on his own. <laughs> so McClanahan will be at the line shooting. Jones checks out, Bryant in. Two free throws for McClanahan. Actually, still a one and one, but the first one's good. So he earns a second. One more for McClanahan. It's good. He's got seven in the game. Lead back up to 12 for the Colonels. Bryant brings it up the floor. All the way to the baseline. Now to Johnson. Johnson 17 foot jumper is good. Cyrus Johnson with his second bucket of the game. Foul called on R.J. Smith. That's his fourth. So Kevin Johnson will be at the line, shooting two here. 26 seconds left. First free throw is good.
second one on the way. That one is good as well. Seventy to fifty-eight. Bryant brings it up the floor, steps back, fires up a three, back iron, no good. Mitchell with the rebound, his turnaround put back, no good. Nichols comes up with it, and they're just going to be content to dribble out the clock. Cats are going to back up, they're not going to foul, and that will do it. The Colonels come into Johnson Coliseum, they picked up a win over the Bearcats, knocking the Cats off for the first time in Southland play. Nichols goes to three and one. Bearcats fall to three and one. Final score here today, 70 to 58. I want to thank Ken Holland for joining me here for both games here today. Thank all of our guys back in the production room coming back out here on their holiday break to help bring these pictures to you. Once again, final score, 70 to 58. We will be back on Wednesday. Bearcats taking on the Lions of Southeastern Louisiana. This has been Sam Houston State Basketball here on the Bearcats Sports Network.